The message today is the three amigos. I call up the three amigos because the story is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And rather than say their names over and over, I thought the three amigos will be a way to say it. Our scripture is from Daniel chapter 3, verse 8 to 18. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has increased a decree. It has issued a decree that everyone worship the image of gold, and that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? If you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what god will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, We do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into a blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. The book of Daniel takes place in a time when Israel had been taken into captivity in Babylon. The names of our heroes in this story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, are the names that their captors had given them to replace their Hebrew names, which made reference to their God and his faithfulness. Though they were captives from Israel, God had prospered them and raised them up to positions of influence in the Babylonian government. But then the king of Babylon had constructed a 90-foot golden statue. And this is believed to have been either a monument to himself or his favorite god. And he commanded everyone should bow down and worship it. Of course, this was a problem for a faithful Jew because the first commandment is, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me, and you shall not bow down and worship any image. Their insistence upon remaining faithful to their god has inspired people through the ages. They went all in for what they believed. One example of the impact of the faith of these three amigos was seen in Great Britain during World War II. In the summer of 1940, more than 350,000 British soldiers had been pushed back by Nazi forces to the coast of occupied France. They were trapped at a place called Dunkirk. German forces were on the way, and they had the capacity to wipe out the entire British expeditionary force, leaving Great Britain wounded beyond the possibility of recovery. That's when a British naval officer wired a three-word message that inspired the British people to act and execute what would become known as the Miracle of Dunkirk. Those three words came from the scripture text that we read today. In the King James Version, which was popular at the time, After Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego affirmed their belief that God is able and will deliver them from the king's hand, they said, But if not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. In other words, if God chooses not to save us right now, we will still be faithful to him. The three-word message sent in World War II was, But if not. The people of England recognized the naval commander's reference to this Bible story, and it solidified their resolve to act. Even though the situation was desperate, their forces were trapped, and it would take a miracle to save them, they were determined not to give in. And so everyone along the British coast who had a boat, fishermen, merchant marine boats, pleasure cruisers, small motor boats, joined together, and they ferried 338,000 soldiers across the English Channel to safety. It was a turning point in the war. You might feel like you're facing your own personal fiery furnace. The situation is desperate, and you feel like it will take a miracle to save you. You might feel that way about the state of our country right now. 
facing pandemics, hurricanes, forest fires, social unrest, political divisiveness, violence, threats to our very way of life. Don't give up. Don't give in to the temptation to compromise your faith. Mark Batterson, author of All In, says he can think of many ways that the three amigos could rationalize just bowing down to the golden image. I'm bowing on the outside, but I'm not bowing on the inside. I'll ask forgiveness right after I get back up. My fingers are crossed, or I'm only breaking one of the Ten Commandments. What good am I to God if I'm dead? I guess a better question would be, what good am I to God if I'm unfaithful? Remember the words of Jesus that I shared with those who were at the parking lot service last week. The people who keep their faith until the end will be saved. Jesus said, as recorded in Matthew 24, 13, the people who keep their faith to the end will be saved. You may never be asked to bow down to a golden image, but you might be asked to bow down to the almighty dollar. Your boss might ask you to cut a corner here to misrepresent your product of service there, to sacrifice your integrity for a sale or promotion. You might be asked to bow down to almighty power. What are you willing to compromise in order to gain power and influence over people to do what you want, to see the person you want elected, the law you want passed? I've been alarmed by the tendency of people I know people who consider themselves Christians, who have shared lies on social media even after they've been shown to be lies, all because they support what they choose to believe in. It all comes down to a refrain from an old Bob Dylan song, you're going to have to serve somebody. It may be the devil, and it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. So I ask, who will you serve? The three amigos held on to their integrity. They would serve the Lord. If they had compromised and bowed down to the statue, they would have been delivered from the fiery furnace, but it would have been by the king and not by God. And it would have been from and not through the furnace. They would have forfeited the amazing testimony they got by failing the test. Their integrity integrity allowed God to show up and demonstrate his glory. And our integrity does the same. I think you know the rest of their story, but just in case, here's what happened. The king was furious and had his servants stoke up the furnace to seven times its normal heat. It was so hot that the men who threw them into the fire were killed by the heat. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were unharmed. They walked around in the fire without it even singeing their clothes, and a fourth man was seen in the flames with them. The king said to is is said to have said that he thinks the fourth man looks like a son of the gods. Some have interpreted this to mean that Jesus, the son of God, was in there with them, and others say it was simply an angel, one of Jesus' emissaries. The point is the same. God was with them and proved he was able and would deliver them, and as a result, the king of Babylon decreed that no one could ever say anything bad about their God from that day on upon penalty of death and dismemberment. Not necessarily in that order. This doesn't mean that he was a convert all of a sudden, but at least he was gaining a healthy respect for God. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, by the way, were returned to their positions of leadership in the king's government. So faced with what seemed like a choice between offending God or offending the king, either they would lose their faith or they would lose their job, they chose to be faithful to God, and the result was that God was glorified And their either-or situation became a both-and situation. They were both faithful and employed. May we make the choice of standing by God as well. Be warned, however, it may not always turn out the way it did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these three amigos. Sometimes when we face the fiery furnaces in our life, it is a but-if-not situation. The corrupt boss fires us for not compromising our integrity to cover for them. The friend unfriends us for not agreeing with their ideas. Mercy Me recorded a song called Even If that I believe was inspired by the story of the three amigos. It says, God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, give me the strength to be able to say, 
it is well with my soul. And we can say that, as the song says, because we know that God is faithful and God is good. And I might add that it struck me the other day that not only was God with these three amigos, but they had each other to help them through their fiery trial. And may we find that kind of strength in God and in our brothers and sisters in Christ to help us stand as well. Paul encourages us in Galatians 6 two, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. In the end, however, it's a difficult, it's, excuse me, in the end, however, it's an individual decision that we have to make. We have to decide who we serve. I remember being attacked by a person years ago who said hurtful things and tried to stir up trouble against me with an old boss. And in the end, I learned to pray for them or try to pray for them at least. And I had to consider the source. In the end, their opinion didn't matter to me. Only one did. We are, as they say, to perform for an audience of one. We must choose fear of the Lord or the fear of man and what they may do to us. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of wisdom. And unfortunately, sometimes the fiery furnaces in our lives are ones of our own making. The hurtful things people say are hurtful because they are true. The only appropriate response when we find this to be the case is to repent, to be sorry for our sins and want to change and to ask God to help us to do so. So today on this World Communion Sunday, we prepare to receive this remembrance of the passion of our Lord, this reminder of his presence with us, even in the fiery furnaces, for he will never leave us or forsake us. And to answer the call to live a life that is faithfully committed, all in for the one who was all in for us. We prepare ourselves with a time of self-examination and repentance. So all you who do, do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from this day on in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this Lord's Supper to your comfort as you humbly confess your sins to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we acknowledge and are sorry for those sins that we have committed by thought, word, and deed against you. We don't want to grieve you anymore. Have mercy upon us for your Son, Jesus Christ's sake, and forgive us the past as we seek your help to endure the fiery furnaces that we face and to live from this day forward a life that will serve and honor you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.